Why do you think you could stop me? Hello everyone, welcome to the highly anticipated ninth episode of the Learn, Create and Grow webinar series on compositing brought to you by the esteemed Technicolor Creative Studios Academy. I'm Annabelle, a training coordinator for the Academy, and it fills me with immense delight to see all of you here once again. We are genuinely honored to have your presence and hope you'll join us until the very end of this webinar as there are some truly exciting prizes up for grab. The Learn, Create and Grow webinar series powered by Technicolor Creative Studios has been thoughtfully designed to offer students and artists like yourselves a captivating glimpse into the enchanting world of the VFX industry and its multifaceted departments. Every month, we release a brand new episode ensuring that talented artists such as yourselves can embark in an exploration of a diverse range of topics through our expert-led VFX masterclasses. And for this particular episode, our focus will be on the captivating realm of compositing. Please welcome our distinguished speaker for the day, Bhaskarachari Komaragiri, who is a principal trainer at the Academy and serves as a lead compositor at MPC India. With an extensive career spanning over 16 years in the VFX industry, he is a highly experienced and skilled VFX artist. Bhaskarachari has contributed his talents to numerous Hollywood Academy-nominated films, such as Roma, Aquaman, Ghost in the Shell, Transformers The Last Night, The Mummy, X-Men Apocalypse, and Pan and the Wasp, Quantumania, to name a few. As a renowned expert in compositing, who has a keen eye for detail and a comprehensive understanding of visual effects, he has earned a reputation as a trusted mentor and an industry expert. 
We are honored to have him lead today's masterclass, ready to enlighten us with his invaluable insights and perspective in the world of compositing. Thank you, Anavil, for the kind introduction. Hello, everyone. I'm Vaspachari Komarigiri, Principal Compliner at Technicolor Creative Studios Academy. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share my knowledge with you all, and I feel that it's an honor to be here today. Hopefully, I will inspire you all about composting. Without further ado, let's start our composting webinar. First things first, what are the outcomes of this webinar? You will get a clear understanding of what is composting, how does it work, why it's a game changer in VFX industry, what types of works does a composter perform, and we have a case study of deep composting too at the end. In order to know how composting works and its significance, we need to look at the filmmaking process. In the filmmaking process, there are three important stages. Pre-production, production, post-production. Post I insist on post-production only. Why? Because the entire VFX work related to the crucial stage of post-production. In today's films, it's possible to create almost anything. This is because of amazing and seamless visual effects work. In this entire VFX pipeline, composting is a final department. Since digital composting is a finalizing department, it depends on other departments' support. So, it's relying on all other upstream departments' outputs like lighting renders, 3D DMP, proto prep outputs, and Machmo cameras, etc. By collecting all the data, an artist combines all the elements of a VFX show, such as live action footage, computer generated imaginary, and digital matte painting into a single image sequence. This entire process is called composing. The artist who is going to work on this role is called compositor. A skilled composer is someone who can work on feature films, animation films, television, and other media productions. Composting is an essential part of VFX as it allows artists to create realistic and believable and seamless blending of images in the shots and scenes that would not be possible with any other technique. Composting process can be complex and time consuming, but it is essential for the final look of your VFX shots. A good compositor can make even the most unrealistic element looks realistic and believable. Here are some of the most common tasks that compositors perform. The process of pulling out alpha channel from green screen or blue screen, which is behind the talent is called keying. By doing this, we can replace a more realistic background behind the actors. It's a procedural method much faster than rotoscopy. Extracting mats for small details and semi-transparent areas are very hard things for rotoscopy. In this case, keying process is very handy on motion blur, hay, fur, etc. The keying methods will separate the foreground from background and will replace desired backgrounds easily. Composters can use color correction to change the look and feel of a VFX shot. This can be used to make a shot more realistic or to create a specific mood or atmosphere. Basically, grading and color correction means matching the source color with reference color. Composters can use a variety of special effects to enhance a VFX shot. This includes adding explosions, fire, smoke, and other effects. This process is called 2D element comp integration. The elements used in this process are called pre-captured or CGI elements. While working with 2D elements, you need to be a bit careful because the placement of elements need to satisfy certain physical conditions of the scanned plates. Otherwise, the comp looks fake and unreal. Another thing to remember while working with this process is the elements might lose quality since breaking off concurrent issue. This is one of the most common tasks that composters perform. They use a variety of techniques to blend live action footage and CGI together so that it looks seamless. Composting also helps to create depth and dimensionality to the final outputs so that you can enjoy not only 2D movies but also studio movies on the big screens. Composting is a challenging and rewarding career. Composters must have a strong understanding of both art and technology. They must be able to work with variety of softwares and they must be able to think creatively to solve the problems. If you are interested and looking for a career in VFX, composting is a great place to start. Thanks, Pascal. That was a great session. 
Before we continue, let's take a quick break and have a round of trivia where you have a chance of winning some great goodies from Technical Creative Studios. All you need to do is listen to the question carefully and put your answers in the chat box as fast as you can. When compositing CG elements into live action footage, where do you apply lens distortion? What is the meaning of the AOV bundle in VFX terminology? The Jungle Book got the Oscar award under which category? The most popular software for rotoscoping and prep paint in the VFX industry is Which was the first Technicolor film made in India? Thank you for posting your answers. Our team will reach out to the winner through email. Please keep an eye on your inbox. We have now got a glimpse of what the Academy has to offer. For those who are interested in signing up or learning more about the application process, click on the link in the upper right corner of your screen. Links to past webinars are also available on our website, linked in the description box. Thank you, Annabel. Without further ado, let's start our composting webinar. Hello, guys. Let's start with some basics. If you are a new composting artist, you should know a few important and fundamental things to understand while we are working with composting. In this webinar, I would like to discuss some of them. Let us start with some sort of nuke node anatomy. Every node within this nuke will communicate with us while working with them. Nuke nodes has three major components such as shape, color, and the connections, the upstream or like input connections, output or downstream connections along with mask options. The shape tells us which part of composting we are working with, whether it is 2D, whether it is 3D, whether it is deep, etc. For example, if you see all 2D tools, they are in rectangular shape with different color coding. Gray node and color correct node are in the same similar color, light blue color which means similar class nodes are in the same similar color coding. Another example is transform and corner pin, blur and defocus. All 2D tools are going to work on x-axis and y-axis, which means 2D space only. All nodes displace channel information so that we can understand what is affecting within that node. In this case, RGB is affecting because of the defocus. By default value of the defocus is 1, that's why it is affecting RGB. But if you see here, the default value of blur is 0, it's not affecting RGB because the value is 0, null. If we are changing that value 1, now you can see the square shape symbol is going to change into rectangular, which means whenever you are seeing square shape of channel information, that means channels are bypassing. Whenever you are seeing the channel information in rectangular shape, that means the node is affecting the channels. For example, I'm changing the value one. You can see, of course, if you are not recognizing on color boss, I will shift to checkerboard. Now you can see, of course, the value is also small. I will change more. Now you can see, even if you see the grade, by default, grade settings are like RGB only. That's the reason alpha channel is not participating in the grading. Whenever you are changing that, or else like even you can see by switching off this green channel, you can see 
at this moment when i am trying to grade green channel is not getting affected by the grade actually only red and blue are affecting we remove that green channel from here even if i'm changing from rgba and removing green channel now you can see this time only alpha is not affecting yeah moving to 3d notes shape of this 3d notes are in curve shape and when we are connecting them with 2d tools we are not going to see any channel information and we can work on x axis y axis and z also that's why it's a 3d space we can able to work these nodes on 3d space most of the tools are like a geometry kind of thing yeah moving to the next deep the next set of tools we need to talk about deep tools they are available in the main menu here all the set of tools are available here the shape of the node is the combination of 2d tools and 3d tools for example i'm taking transform and i'm taking curve if i combine them you can see one side it is curve like here and another side it is rectangular like here of course it is not exactly straight but it's representing similar shape yeah usually these deep nodes we are calling 2.5d nodes because it's a unique way of combining and rendering elements actually we can recognize them with the stretchy d symbol with deep blue color these deep tools have unique feature not combine them with any 2d tools or 3d tools for example we can't connect them in upstream we can't connect them in downstream also these tool will connect with only the set of deep tools only however we have a case study about these deep tools later in this session coming to particle system usually we are using these particle nodes to generate some sort of particle effects groups and gizmos are identically same a group can convert it into gizmo gizmo can convert it into group the shape of group is hexagonal and the shape of gizmo is arrow symbol can you see here it's showing one side only that to left to right side group can enter into inside by selecting like control enter but how we can create a group if you have a set of tools here by selecting them by using control g we can able to make a group that group we can export as a gizmo by exporting here and you can give like uh, any name test so that we can bring that here as a gizmo going here and using test gizmo open we are going to get that even what is gizmo actually gizmo is kind of like plugin we can share with uh, our buddies the color of this node will decide based on its duty for example here if you are seeing like a green color which means this tool is going to be useful for keying so if you see here all keying tools are in green color yeah even this gizmo can convert it into group by pressing here we can convert this gizmo this ibk gizmo we can convert into group so we can see by jumping into inside if someone is not in your network if you want to share that tool to them so if you are sharing the script the gizmos will show error if you want to share the gizmo you need to share the gizmos in the form of groups only let's have a quick look into other things if you see here in this gray node there are other symbols e a m c v and some channel information here what does it mean e means expression m means mask a means animation c means clone and v means views let us see individually let's start with clone if you select any node if you press alt k it is going to generate another clone node if you see the name of the node also as it is same if you are selecting both of them if you are changing any parameter here the other node also going to get the same value see even in transform also if you are changing anything the second node also going to change the same thing in scaling yeah the second node also going to change the same as this blur also but the thing is 
if you are pressing like alt k alt k alt k we are going to get n number of clones but all are going to be in the same name if you see here all are representing with the same name it is going to give a lot of confusion and even whenever you are manipulating these values the others are going to change but as per the industry professional suggestions we should not use clones why because let me show you that in this case i'm getting mask from above section but we are not getting that mask from here this node is showing error even it is exactly replicating whatever we have here you can see another link i want to discuss is expression this expression is unidirectional but this clone is bidirectional that means if i'm manipulating here this will manipulate here if i'm manipulating here this will manipulate here but in this case it's not like like that if you are manipulating here this node is going to manipulate but if you are manipulating here something it's not going to accept here because it will work on based on chair and pain master and slave relation so if i'm changing something here for example if i'm changing something here this node also going to change the values you can see the values are same here and this expression we can get like in two forms one is like link form another one is within that inside expression itself we are going to get without link also we can get that's what i mentioned here expressions are two types one is linked expressions another one is non linked expressions we can hide all the links by using alt e alt e will hide all the links next coming to this mask usually any node will have outside mask the mask option we have outside but here we are getting we are not getting that mask option because we are reading that mask from input let us see i'm taking like freshly great i have mask option now if you see here in this input i have alpha that alpha i'm reading from here if i read from here rgb alpha now i'm getting that m symbol here but my mask option went away if you take any node if you are giving that set key you are going to get the animation symbol and even if you are changing this mix value anything lesser than 1 then you are going to get this x symbol this is a mix value actually the mix value will work from 0 to up to below 1 so even if you are giving like 0.999999 also you are going to get the text value that means any value lesser than 1 that mix value yeah apart from that you can see we should not change that uh, any node's name actually the node is node name is like unique in the system in the node graph but if you want to you give any label or like any node you can use like uh, in the node area here only we need to change can you see this i just added this uh, node here this is coming here section is showing all the channel information if you see rgb this is alpha this is depth and the pink and cyan colors representing forward and backward channels actually uh, here it is like forward channels only yeah so it's quite hard to show all the channels into within this one node that's the reason they created like uh, only one green symbol here this is indicating all other channels till this time we learn about the basics of loop nodes so what next how this information is useful to understand better in advanced composting let's have a case study of deep composting along with its uses before going to talk about deep nodes and deep composting workflow i would like to explain what is deep composting how to understand deep images deep composting is a different way of rendering and working with visual elements 
Deep composting is based on around the concept of a pixel containing multiple samples of data instead of the traditional samples of pixels. A standard 2D image contains a single value for each channel of each pixel. In contrast, deep image contains multiple samples per pixel at varying depths and each sample contains per pixel information such as color, opacity and camera relative depth. If it is confusing you, let me explain you in detail by showing something. Let's start with the case study of deep. If you see here, I arranged all the tools based on their duties. Among all, deep read is the most important node. Why? Because this is the only node which can import deep information into node graph. So let's see how it can import that deep information. Try to read deep read from here. So we have deep plane. So it will view from here. We are going to get that like this. But how many formats it will accept? As of now, you can see here it is accepting in EXR, but it can accept DTX and ODG also. Next tool set is evaluation tools. First one is like a deep sample and another one is deep to points. Deep sample, it's kind of like color picker actually. It's a, it have like a one POS. By default, this POS will be in the left side corner. You can take that and you can keep here so that in the deep sample panel, this is deep sample panel, you can see like all the information here actually. You can see like deep front and deep back. That means how much, how many pixels are like uh, closer to the camera, how many pixels are away from the camera also you can able to see that. Even how many samples we have. Even if I'm moving here, the sample count is changing. You can see, right? Even it will give you that representation, visual representation of how much distance the pixel from camera here and here. Can you see the position also it is going to give position information also we are going to get. And not only that, we are going to get RGB information along with alpha value. Alpha values are like in uh, decimals. Even RGB is also getting like in decimals actually. This deep sample is going to evaluate deep data in 2D fashion. One more tool, this is deep two points. This deep two points have two inputs. One we are going to connect to deep, another we are going to connect to camera. This camera should be render camera. For example, if I'm taking like normal camera, that time also it will work. But if you view them in 3D space, we can able to see our deep data, the plane we are viewing in 3D space. But if I'm changing from normal camera to render camera perspective wise it's changing a lot so always it's better to read from render camera only not from the default camera okay so i just added a note here you can use this note to transform your deep pixel information into points in the 3d space that you can see in new 3d view like a point cloud this node is useful to position the reference what does it mean if you take like a card, I can able to place this card through the space. How? Let us have a look. So you just select any portion by using this vertex selection. Select that. In this particular position, I need to insert this card. Right click. Use like select position. This card is went there and sitting on that particular location. In order to see that uh, card, I need to give a bit uh, bigger size of this thing so that we can able to see this. Now card is like uh, sitting there, sticking with that uh, plane. Even you can rotate, you can do. That's what here they mentioned. This node is useful to position the reference. So it will give you a clear representation like in 3D space, how we can uh, add uh, other geometry along with deep. It's look like point cloud, right? Let me take another node i'm trying to describe like cloud versus cloud <laughs> okay you can see here this is look like cloud right point cloud right but what is the difference between point cloud and deep data when we are importing the point cloud while camera is moving point cloud won't move but in deep while camera is moving deep cloud also going to move 
see for example this is very heavy i will change to aeroplane now you can see yeah that is the only difference simply while working with point cloud while camera is moving point cloud won't move it will be static but deep data will move deep cloud will move yeah coming to depth versus deep while similar in name and concept deep image files are in fact not exactly same as depth renders that means this deep is like something different actually but let us see like how depth is going to visible here so this is my 2d image how i can say it's a 2d image you can see we are getting like a channel information here which means we are getting a 2d image here actually so only 2d images can show that channel information so if we are coming here and changing this one to depth so we are seeing the depth actually basically this depth is like a, a, it's a simply rgb images actually you can see we are getting like a, that information we are getting like a rgb of course however like here we are not having any values in green and blue but we are having red value yeah it's kind of like a rgb images with pixel data representing the distance from the camera what does it mean if you are not doing this value you are going to see a depth these depth renders are simply rgb images with pixel data representing distance from the camera in 2d fashion i'm talking about it but deep images are not going to be like that just now as we saw they are like point cloud kind of thing moving to deep comp versus classic 2d comp so if you ask me which is like very easy one i will say like deep comp only why because you can see a example here we have a star here and we added one more layer anytime if we are getting any layer from 3d now you can see if i'm trying to play this you will understand what's wrong here so this planet and this earth planet supposed to go behind the star but they are just simply like playing on the top top of the layer of the star in order to make them go behind uh, we need to do something actually like in 2d way it's quite hard to send them until and unless if we don't have any proper alpha for that okay even what i can do by using like mask i can send them stencil i can use stencil i can make that for example around 10 i got this one i will add a roto there so that i can remove and i can send them that uh, this thing but whenever it comes here after few frames i need to animate this roto after that it's supposed to come there actually for that i need to exactly do that roto there in order to give that illusion that planet is coming behind the star yeah now you can see that is coming behind that one but it's uh, always a nine even if you go further again somewhere here this planet is going behind that because of this layer only i don't want to keep in this area i need to avoid this so before coming here i will give a set key here and i will remove that so that it is not going to give any burden to us sorry again i need to throw this one out now you can see of course here also we are getting like this one it is overlapping here so i don't want to overlap on there yeah this is some juggling job is happening here actually you can see we need to struggle a lot in order to send that in order to like make it that we need to do like proper roto until and unless if we don't have any proper roto there it is quite hard actually but the same concept we can see in deep composting how it is going to represent us boom we got full comp so if you ask me which is easier one in this case deep composing is a easier one because what exactly what i expected that way it is working see these plants are going behind according to the depth that's what the advantage of deep let's see like the same thing by using this same deep two points 
Let's add this. Let's see. Can you see this? We are weaving them in 3D space. So my intention to show you this, deep is exactly working like a space. Okay, let us see, like I created a small example here. You can see here, I created a small setup here. Let me disable this. Yeah, I created a small scene here with some vertical columns and one horizontal column. So if I'm combining them by using like a geo -merge, you guys know, right? Like a geo -merge is like, a, it will merge all the geos into scene, okay? Even if we are connecting them through scene also, you will get the same visual representation actually. So same like, if you want to connect with deep also, in order to see the same thing in deep way also, if you are trying to connect them, they are not going to connect. Why? Because it's like a 3D actually. So in order to convert our this thing, we required one that is scanline render. If we have that scan line, if we have a camera, by connecting this camera here, we can see, we can view them by connecting to deep. Yeah, now you can see, even if you are applying any transform geo, how exactly we are moving in the 3D space, That is too much value. We'll give like 20, positive 20, minus 20. So as like a 3D scene, we can able to work deep also in the same way. I hope you got the point. See here also you are seeing like the same visual representation in 3D way. See that? So my intention to show you this. So this deep is going to work based on 3D space. Let's move to some other area. Let me copy this. Yeah. So I grabbed some of the tools and I arranged it here. Let us see deep merge tool. Deep merge tool can combine all the elements. Like it will work like a 2D merge actually. But in 2D merge, we have like many options. But in deep merge, we have very less options. You can see, right? We have combined hold out and plus. So plus is like plusing the elements and you can see right here, hold out. This hold out we are going to discuss a bit later, but combine is nothing but it's kind of over actually. We are combining elements like over. How deep merge is combining that uh, layers? So this is my BG. I'm adding like cloud on top of it. And I'm just grabbing like one more layer. There I'm adding my flight. Yeah. Yes, this pilot is part of like a aeroplane. So I'm taking like one more deep merge node and I'm connecting him here. Only we need to connect in a order. Even without that order also we can able to connect. I will show you one minute. Just I'm grabbing them. I will place here. I can use one merge node. I will select all of them and I can use it's supposed to be deep merge. Can you see? I can combine all of them into one go. We can able to combine them. But this is not like a professional way. Professional way, we need to go like this way only. Let's start with the crop. Crop tool is exactly going to work like a 2D crop actually. How exactly 2D crop is cropping? The same way the deep crop also going to crop actually. But it have like a unique feature that is deep feature actually. We'll see like that one also. Uh, for our understanding, like I will take like a separate node and I'm just connecting that one here. You can see. Now by instantly, you can't able to recognize uh, that flight here actually. If we are waving here, we have flight. But after connecting that crop, it will automatically going to show you black. Why? Because here options are enabled, all the options are enabled. So in this entire section, if you want to see like uh, the parameters, Z near, Z4 and B box. This B box, only this B box only work like 2D way. 
that remaining two ways are going to work like deep way actually so in order to work 2d way you just disable these two things so that this will work like a 2d way you can see right the 2d crop node also going to work like that only for example let me take this image here this crop also going to work like that only see if i'm just uh, using like this way this way it will crop that if you are seeing like here that will crop sorry i'm not cropping that i'm just still using like this one only you can see right that is because of i removed that black outside how exactly this crop tool is working the similar way this deep crop also going to work you can see right yes this is working as it is like 2d crop can see so let's learn about other things also so whenever we are applying that uh, z near and z far that means uh, the unique features of deep deep crop we need to disable this so we need to enable those two things so now without enabling also we are seeing that flight how these guys are going to help us for example let me take this deep sample here in this case, I'm getting like uh, that pixel. Uh, the minimum distance from the camera is like 241 and the maximum distance is 241.625, something like that. So if you zoom here or else if I'm keeping somewhere here, still I'm getting like uh, some value. Okay, I'm seeing like this value. Those values I'm going to apply in the prop area. So in order to apply here, we need to enable here. We need to give there so if i'm moving from crop you will see particularly that area is cropping actually can you see this it's cropping till that area so in this area what we are going to keep will give like more values like other values basically you can keep zero and even if you want the other side you just disable this the other side will come actually i will keep like 265 it's giving completely of the way i want more i will give like 242 can you see this that is cropping that much area so if you want this portion you need to keep this one if you want that portion you can keep this one so whichever the way you can able to even if you want in between also you can able to give that see here if i give like 255 i'm removing everything so near always near value supposed to be lower lower than this value so if i'm giving like 210 now you can see that total area we are grabbing here if i'm giving like something like 200 also it is not available it's supposed to be more than this value yeah i want that that portion only so that you want this one or you want this one that you decide for time being i'm moving to transform tool let me disable this cloud and let me see here yeah so by using this transform i can able to move this pilot bit more further or else i can bring him into like nearby if he is not like nearby like we can able to keep that can you see this this handle he is trying to keep that without that see feeling like uh, it's not exactly he is not exactly holding that that is the feeling we are getting here so and even we can able to offset in y also even you want to throw him like outside you can give like uh, 20 he will go outside if you want to bring him in front of that flight you can give like new to 20 pixels he will come out of that flight actually not only like that even you can keep them in between also if i'm keeping like 10 minus 10 you can see you can get the person like off the way actually you can see see yeah in the off way also we can able to keep him that is the advantage we are going to get with deep actually so while we while we are working with the deep composting we can able to keep things 
before, after, in between also. This is the only flexibility we are going to get with the deep actually. There is no other method we are going to get this kind of flexibility. Okay. Yeah, I hope you got the point. As like, uh, you know, we have transform mask, right? Yeah, as like transform mask having like one mask, the similarly, we can able to use that mask here actually. Let me show you that. Let me take that roto. I just uh, added a roto here. The thing is like, I just want to keep half of the portion only uh, inside and half of the portion supposed to be outside. So, I'm just using this mask. Yeah, can you able to see this? Half of the portion only we are keeping like uh, he's supposed to be inside and half of the portion he's supposed to be outside. We can able to give that. I hope you, you can able to see that. So for that reason, we are using like this one. So um, basically we are not going to get much flexibility with this kind of thing, but uh, we have a option to use actually. That's why they added like that mask option here. If you take like color correction node, this color correction node does not have any mask operation as like this 2D tool does. This 2D tool have like this mask option, but uh, this uh, deep color correction does not have that option. So how we can use this one? How we can uh, crop, like how we can mask that thing if we are using in deep. So basically it, we are doing some color correction. It will apply overall. Yeah, let me enable this and let me show you. So it will apply like to overall actually. But I want to apply only the particular portion. For example, this portion only I, I supposed to apply. So in that case, we are using this crop. And even we know like uh, this deep merge is going to combine everything, right? We are just using this uh, deep merge node to combine these two things. And we are seeing here so that can able to see this. If I'm changing something here, you can see it is changing that particular portion only. Yeah, that is the advantage. So this crop is going to work like a mask, but that too, it is giving like that feature of that, uh, how much area we supposed to do. Even I want to show you that a unique feature of this uh, color correct node also. Anyhow, we grabbed that color correction node here. I will show you that. Can you see this one more option? See, at this moment, this is going to work like exactly 2D tool actually. There is no um, differentiation or anything like that. But if you jump into this masking area, this mask area is going to change that entire rule for that uh, deep concept is going to come here actually. So for example, if you see here 0 to 1 in between value also we can see. So those values they divide into A, B, C, D kind of thing. So basically 0 indicating dark, 1 indicating highlight. The values between 0 to 1 is like midtone indicators of midtone. Yeah, so we can able to manipulate your highlight, midtone, shadow kind of thing. But another thing I want to show you here, based on the depth also, we can able to do that. Now, can you see here, if I'm adjusting this value, see previously we got some value here that is 240, right? 240 around actually. So consider we are giving like 240 here. I'm just giving 240 value here. And 240, uh, 242 value here. Okay, here I'm giving like 230, here I'm giving 250. I'll tell you like what is the, what is these things actually, but you know why I feed it like a B and C. Yeah, but still it is not showing anything. It's it. One minute guys, that is happening because of this thing actually. Let me reset this. Yeah, even after adding these values also, nothing is happening. From here to here if you see here there is nothing is happening but if i'm using this uh, z limit then everything is going to change actually even you can see if i'm giving some value here that value only applicable only the particular area because we isolated that based on the range okay what if if i'm giving like 240 here itself 241 here itself if I'm giving like 242 there itself so that you can see we are getting like a line that means everything like one unit distance only we are getting that unit distance is this one but if I give like every value is 242 
242.25 now we'll see you are not getting anything so what i am trying to show you here if you have any values here those values are indicating that particular location but if you are giving some value like lesser than this value that means you are getting a rampness can you see this the color is very thick in this area but it is going like a fall off i will show you like by giving more value here actually let's uh, let's consider like 300 now you can see it is like uh, here very thick and while it's going like in uh, depth it is like reducing that that unique feature we are going to get with this uh, deep color correct okay i hope you got the point yeah one more point you need to remember here without this limit z you are not going to apply that kind of separation so because of this g g only it is going to help limit g only will help you to get that kind of result even you can mix like as like 2d tool we have that mix tool actually we discussed it right so anytime like if you are uh, like using this one we'll get that x symbol right likewise here also we can able to mix that even in deep also this x symbol will come yeah that is the advantage of this thing next let us discuss with this expression also so if i am giving like one expression here deep dot friend and i will give like 0 0.5 Are you able to see this? I can I can able to give like some some sort of fall off actually. So it is changing the density of the pixels, deep pixels. I can show you with other values. Let me give like uh, zero point five. Uh, can you see this? Without this, with that, it's blending right. See, it's covering more. Okay, coming to the reformat. There is nothing much about reformat. How exactly? Uh, 2d reformat is going to work the similar way this reformat also going to work deep reformat also going to work you can see reformat this is exactly our show resolution so it will work like that how exactly what are the options we have in a normal 2d way deep also will have like the same similar kind of thing these are the formats we have actually like out format this is a show format here also we have the same thing whatever we have here the same things we have here actually but why we supposed to apply reformat for the deep sometimes what is going to happen production guys are going to give like uh, less resolutions for us actually because as you guys know deep is very heavy i mean to say like uh, once uh, uh, the rough comp is done like a uh, client is satisfied with that then uh, we, they are going to render whatever the requirement based on that they will render actually yeah let us see like deep holdout versus deep match but what is this uh, deep holdout basically holdout means if you don't want any particular portion for example i don't want this particular portion i'm taking like one mask if you are uh, stenciling that i'm connecting this one here this one here and I'm stenciling that. So the same stenciling is happening in depth space that is holdout. So for example, I can't remove this middle portion. Correct, right? If you see here, this middle portion I can't remove because in order to remove that securely, I need to do proper roto there actually. Then only I can remove that. See again, I need to take this overlap or else I need to add like a properly here so the stenciling means we are removing whatever unwanted thing i can give you a visual representation here now i taken this whole load and i can connect this one here and i can give this aeroplane connection here i can see that now you can see that aeroplane is removing from the cloud so if the stenciling is happening in a 2d way then that is called like a stencil whatever the unwanted things we are removing from here that is called stenciling same stenciling is happening in deep way you can able to see this so how this is going to helpful for us for example i will show you one more thing i have like deep merge 
So I'm connecting the same aeroplane and cloud. Much is going to come and we already know that. But I want to show you some more things. Here, I told you right previously, we have like a holdout. We can use that holdout to get that same similar kind of result. If you see from here to here, we are getting that same similar kind of result. So, but what is the difference between this uh, deep match tool to deep holdout? What is the point of having two different tools which are doing the same job? Whenever you are seeing this kind of channel information, that means this is converting into 2D. But this deep merge is not showing any kind of information, channel information, which means from here, you can connect any 2D tool. Yeah, that is the advantage we are going to get here actually. Deep merge will keep the deep flow continuously, but deep holdout will break that. But I want to show you one more thing that is deep to image. By using this deep to image, there are two tools only converting our deep information into 2D. Those two tools are these two only. Deep holdout, another one is deep to image. These tools converted our deep information into 2D. The channels are representing, those channels are converted into 2D. We are connecting these uh, 2D tools there. So in old days, whenever they want to render something like uh, with deep holdout, they will render like this and they will give to us. So if we are combining how exactly we are seeing that output, the same similar way we are going to get that actually. Let me check from here to here. Almost there is no difference. So whenever we are uh, combining that holdout and with uh, our images, we need to use adjoint to our actually. That is the thing is not going to differ from the original comp output. See, now it's almost there. Let's move to another set of tools. These three tools are going to convert our 2D images into deep. Let us have a look. The noise, it's kind of like normal 2D tool. So I'm converting this noise into deep image by using this deep from image. So whether it is converted or not, we need to check in 3D space only. So for that, I'm just checking with deep to points. So deep to points and deep samples are both are like very useful tools constantly we are using in uh, production. Can you see this? Now it is like uh, specifying that. Now if you see here, when I did like the default settings, when I reset the default settings, everything is went off. Why? Because this deep from image will work based on the specify Z. You click here, you give some value, then only it is going to show, otherwise it's not. For example, if I'm giving like 10, now you can see this card, whatever it is created here, that is like 10 units distance from the camera actually. So let me change this to five. Now you can see the card is moving towards to camera. Actually here in this one, in this noise node, we don't have any depth information here. That's the reason we are specifying the Z how much distance it's supposed to go actually. So without this, deep from image is not going to work. Let us see the same scenario with uh, another case. Any input have, any CG render is having some depth. If you are connecting that uh, deep from image there, so that you are going to get this kind of representation. Are you able to see this? Yeah, as we know, deep is not completely 2D. It's not completely 3D. It's come. It's somewhere in, in between 2D and 3D. Even the shape also tells us like that. One side it is curved, another side is rectangular. That's why we are calling 2.5D. Renders are always 2.5D. Now in this case, I will make it default. Even though I was not enabled anything, still it is representing like a deep image. Moving to another tool. So actually in production, we are following this method. If you have any CG render, beauty render, that render we are combining with deep re recolor. Beauty is going to match with the color input. Our alpha is going to connect with depth so that both are going to combine here. All together, we are seeing the final output from here. If you see here, we are getting like alpha. 
So we are reformatted. If you are projecting on this uh, beauty, it's supposed to work. So in order to work that, we need to give this uh, target input alpha so that it will work fine. There is no other issues. Only thing we need to care about this one. And after that, you are just using deep two points so that we can see the visual representation in the 3D space. Let's move to another tool. This is like deep from frames. This deep from frames having like a sample information, frame range and Z minimum, Z maximum, which means distance from the camera. So here the unit is one, two. Okay, let we can change that. Yeah, first of all, like uh, how many samples I want, that many samples I'm giving here. And after that, I'm creating expression samples within this frame range we are going to get. So this one I'm replacing here. And you can see now I got a setup from our old script. Here I'm taking like a bunch of planets. I'm all together, I'm combining them. So these guys are combining. Let me show you in 3D space first. In 3D space. Now you can able to see that we got like that many samples. How many samples we given? 25. If I'm changing to 10, it is reducing. See, I'm giving two for your representation. If I'm giving light, again, I'm giving to 25 so that the same value we are going to get here. So if I'm changing this one into here, we have like, we have planets here. So I need to push this one to that particular location. So I'm going to use this uh, max. Now let's jump into 2D. Let's connect here. Now you can see if I'm playing this, this earth and uh, this planet, planet is going like in the depth fog. This is coming out of the fog actually. By using this deep from frames, we can able to create fake volumes. Once you've done that comp, entire comp, there are two ways to render that. One, you can convert uh, your deep into 2D or like you can continue with the deep only. So this deep have the capability of rendering all or like uh, RGB, RGBA. In this case, I'm just selecting like RGB. File type supposed to be EXR because I'm reading all the EXRs, the same format I'm trying to render. Right now we have like EXR, we'll go with that. And after that data type, we need to give like 16 bit or like 32 bit. If you give 16 bit tells also kind of fine, but if you give 32 bit, the data size is going to be very heavy actually. So always the compression supposed to be JIP scan line render. This is the only format which can hold that deep. Okay. After that, you know, this, these things are like common actually, but exactly what we have like in a normal 2D, 2D write node, the same things are going to we are going to get here actually for deep also. I hope it was an informative session. Signing off now. But remember, we'll be waiting for you at Technical and Creative Studios Academy. Apply today to start your journey towards becoming a composing artist. Thank you. Over to you, Annabelle. We appreciate all the participants who joined us for today's informative and engaging webinar. We trust that you found it valuable and enjoyable. If you have any further inquiries, Please do not hesitate to reach out to us using the contact details provided on your screen. For those who missed the webinar, a recording will be accessible on our YouTube channel. So feel free to share it with anyone who might benefit from it. Stay connected with us on social media for updates on upcoming episodes and exciting content. Thank you again for joining us and we will look forward to welcoming you back in the next installment of Learn, Create and Grow. Until then, take care.